welcome to another episode of the Imaginary Boys podcast. I am one of your two hosts, which may or may not be Lettuce, considering some other things that have happened. Uh, I'm one of your two hosts, which is Mr. Habanero, and I have my secondary host, which is it could be Lettuce or it could be me. We don't know. Yeah, we we, we don't seem to know anymore. Um <laughs> So, yeah, uh, how are you? You know what? Before we before we jump into anything at all, um, how are you doing, buddy? How are you feeling? I am. I'm doing I'm doing OK. Doing OK? Like just kind of just just. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just it, there's nothing spectacular, nothing terrible. Just just a whole so- sort of having an average week. Mm. Yeah, I know that feeling. I've been kind of out of it these last couple of weeks because of um Everything that's been going on, um, I've already I, I mean, I haven't really talked a lot about it. Um, you know, I talked about it in like a a stream that didn't stay on my channel. But, uh, you know, about a about a little over a week ago, I got the second vaccination for covid. And um, that thing that that particular that particular, uh, you know, vaccine, it uh, it really kicked my ass. Um, so I was really sicking out of it for like a week and I wasn't able to make any content. And even now I, I sort of feel like I'm still kind of making my way through it, like muddling, muddling my way through it. I'm not really feeling any symptoms, but I'm just kind of my whole, my whole sleeping schedule and everything was affected by that vaccination. So, um, oh yeah, the, um, one of the side effects of the COVID vaccination is you end up suffering from COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and one of the things and one of the common things that just happens is the, uh, the the stress that it does put on your body uh, as you're fighting it. Like it, it will leave you kind of dragging and fatigued for weeks on end. So yeah. I actually had a conversation with my dad. Uh, what was it yesterday um, where he was just uh, telling me about all of the very gnarly things that go on involving COVID as well as the vaccination. And I'm not going to give his particular opinion on um, whether he supports it or whether he's against it, because that's his own thing. But um, he's just explaining to me all of the like messy stuff involving like, you know, like he, when I told him I got the vaccination, he's like, oh, yeah, you probably got hit really, really hard from that thing. And I totally understand. So um, for all of you people out there who are also uh, going out and getting your second vaccination, um, watch out. It's it's a hell of a doozy. It, it, it'll whoop your ass because uh, it definitely did it to me. <laughs> right. Uh, one of the, especially if you believe you've had covid before. Yeah, I've heard that people that have actually had it and then go and get the vaccination are hit even harder, which let me tell you, yeah. I, I never caught the covid before. But that vaccination hit me really hard, so I can't even begin to imagine how much harder it's going to hit people who've already had it. I'm opting against getting the vaccination only because I have COVID antibodies. Right. Because um, you've got I, it? Yeah, well, at some point, I don't know when. Mm-hmm. Um, over 2020, any time I came up with uh, cold or flu-like symptoms... I tested for for flu and COVID, uh, and they all came back negative. But I got some blood work done recently, and the doctor was like, "You have COVID antibodies." Oh. And I'm like, "I'm like, huh?" And the only time I can think about it, think about like having caught COVID, yeah, was actually in late 2019. There was this really terrible viral head cold. Yeah, I actually that was I heard about a around. bunch of people. I heard about a bunch of people getting like a really really terrible cold in 2019 specifically, and a lot of people have kind of come to be, like come to believe with a lot of evidence behind it that that was like the first strain of COVID that was kind of like out there in the world hitting people before we knew that it was actually COVID. Yeah, schools in my area got closed for uh 2 weeks. Mm-hmm. Because of just the because uh, of that head cold outbreak, uh, it wasn't the flu. The, the, the doctors didn't know what it was, so they were just calling it a viral head cold and uh, subscribe and prescribing a bunch of homeopathic remedies mm-hmm. like uh, vitamin C supplements 
uh, zinc tablets, stuff like that. Classic prevention stuff. It's classic, like, yeah, like, classic pre- pre- preventative stuff. And, you know. Yeah. People, I, and, and people stayed sick for, with it for a while. Um, mm-hmm. I know I was, uh, it, it had drug me down for at least two weeks. Uh, my ex-wife, uh, got something she she had kind of a cough and respiratory ailment from Thanksgiving to New Year's wow damn that's a long t- that's a long time oh my god that's yeah. I'd be mean, just about a month and a half yeah yeah that's oh that's intimidating god, I'm but glad. the thing is the thing is it wasn't constant it was like like she'd be okay with like one day the next day she'd just have this really weird cough yeah stuck with her huh yeah yeah so that's the i mean i am not specifically against the vaccination itself but yeah no that's fine i was trying just, to like yeah i just if people are not really sure i suggest skipping it right only right. only because as as so many unknowns and uh, just re- like in the past two months or so, I know of at least four people fully vaccinated who had major hospitalizations due to COVID. Right. So, like we know, we we now know that it doesn't actually prevent you from getting it. It doesn't stop you from per- from transmitting it. The best that we can hope for is is, is that it lessens your symptoms, but you know. So they're like, yeah, it's, you know, the, the vaccination probably was what kept you alive, mm. we think. Mm-hmm. So, like, if, you, if you're high risk, definitely take it. Like, if you have, if you already have, like, respiratory things, or you're high risk, uh, you have other underlying health issues, yes, you probably should. Mm-hmm. But other, But outside of that, if you're not... If you're kind of sitting on the fence, I would suggest kind of sitting it out. Only only because uh, they're talking about, you know, this vaccine is, you know, they're talking about uh, uh, the Delta strand and now there's another one coming. Yeah, Uh, I've heard about I've heard there's like three different kinds roaming around right now. So Pfizer's already talking about additional booster shots. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I mean, I. I don't know if I want to get any more after the two that I've gotten. I just wanted to get the original. Like, I. I you, you wanted I, to be dosed. You. You wanted your dosing because. Well, you, I have. I have like very sensitive lungs. So and I, yes. when when the original when we had the original lockdown and everything and COVID was going around, I was intimidated because I oh. knew that it was specifically a respiratory attacking kind of virus. And yeah, knowing uh, what I know about you, yeah, you would. I I, I don't uh, blame you for being intimidated and or a little bit scared. Yeah. So I wanted to do like what I could as best as I could to protect myself, and I was really good through the whole. Like, I didn't get COVID at all, like, at all at any point. So, um, which, you know, like, when I when I had the ability to choose to get the vaccination, my brain was like, well, it, it's another way of protecting my already possibly sensitive lungs. Um, so, and that's the thing is, because when I got vaccinated, um, my lungs are, were fine the whole time. I actually didn't have any cough or fluid in my lungs or, or well, or, you know, any kind of, none of the symptoms that I got from the vaccination revolved around my lungs at all. They were all pretty much um, other bodily symptoms, like, you know, um, fatigue, weakness, uh, paleness, um, headaches, uh, chills. I was actually, there was one particular day where I was cold nonstop (laughs) on a warm day, which blew my mind. Um, Lucky. Yeah, I was free. There were one of the weirdest symptoms was when I was freezing my goddamn ass off, and it was like in the middle of noon, you know, on a summer day. And I was like, "What the hell? Like, why am I shivering? I need to go to bed." <laughs> like, this hot is August, awful. hot August afternoon. Yeah, you know, it's well. I mean, given where you live, it's like eighty, but you know, eighty is pretty rough for you guys. 
Yeah, I mean, well, I'm a, I'm an orig- originally a Cali boy, so I mean, you know, like it's 80 degrees outside. I'll I'll take a windbreaker with me, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> so, right. um, but yeah, it's yeah, it, it was definitely. I didn't have any symptoms that revolved around my lungs, but I did have other stuff, and it was not. It was no bueno. So, but right, uh, I, I get it. So I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Oh, it's it's all good. It was a choice I made and I kind of like knew I had multiple people warn me like weeks ahead that I could get some pretty nasty symptoms. Um, so and I got to take a week off, which I mean, like, you know, like I kind of this may sound ridiculous. I kind of needed a week off. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Like, I love y'all, but I, I needed a week off and uh, getting that vaccination. And also part of it too, was that it fit into my schedule. I didn't have any plans or anything like that, or any people that I had to meet with. It was important. So I was like, okay, I have this week to myself. I haven't made any plans. I don't have anything going on other than, you know, if I wanted to do regular content creation, but I kind of want to take a small break. So this is like the perfect time to get vaccinated and be sick for a week. So that's the choice that I made. So there you go. (laughs) But all of your friends, all, all five of us missed you. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, um, you, you guys, you guys are diehards, I love you. Um, I definitely had multiple people contacting, they're like, are you okay? Like, are you alive? Are you doing fine? I, we miss you. And I was like, I oh. almost did it. I almost did a health and safety check, uh, called in a health and safety check on you. Yeah, I had everybody contacting me. I was kind of surprised. Uh, it's kind of like one of those things that like you don't realize how many people love and miss you or and care about you until you go missing. <laughs> like you never really fully realize it until you're gone um so thank you guys Th- for everybody who i just want to say because i know a bunch of you guys um that did this uh listen to this podcast all the time um and i love you guys for it um for all you guys that uh went out of your way to contact me during my week of sickness uh when you guys were worried and checking up on me and making sure i was live i really love you guys thank you so much from the bottom of my heart thank you I appreciate that. It really made me genuinely feel like I'm cared about. And I really appreciate that. So thank you guys. I love you. Mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, I kind of wanted to, I just wanted to briefly talk about that so that people knew that I wasn't dead. Um, so uh, what I really wanted to talk about is, and this kind of happened um, during, I mean, most of my time while I was sick with the with the vaccination, I was mostly sleeping and vegetating in front of uh, lots and lots of anime. But um, one of the things that I did on the days when I was starting to feel better was um, I have had a craving to play um, some of my favorite old games. And it, it blew my mind because I like I've been playing lots and lots of new games for the channel. Um, I play something new, like all the time on the channel. Like I play new horror games. I play silly games, you know, fun games, like anything that looks cute, fun or interesting or, or scary or spooky or anything to my taste. And um, lots of new stuff, lots of indie developers. Um, but one thing that I'll say is that they don't like and I, I kind of like realized this this last week when I was uh, playing all these older games uh, in my collection that I've had. Um, I was starting to realize that like newer games don't feel I I don't feel like they hold my attention or my captivation as much as a lot of the older games from my past that I that I played. And so, like, for example, like, you know, like I can play a game for the channel or whatever, and like I can I can adore it and enjoy it and love it. And but then, like, you know, I'll either completed on the channel and I'm like, okay, that's done. You know, that took me like maybe a few days or a couple of hours or whatever. Um, and that was done on the channel. I'm done with that and I enjoyed it, but it's over and that's it. And, you know, and I even forget about them sometimes, you know, or, um, even if I'm trying to like play stuff on my own, it just, a lot of the newer stuff that I've played on like steam and stuff like that. Like, it's like, okay, like I'll play this for like a couple of hours and then I'm done. Or, or I'll come back to it later or, you know, it's just, but when I get back into playing some of my older games, like I played a bunch, I played some of my older games on my Nintendo uh, DS um, because, you know, laying in bed and not being able to do much, it's like, oh, well, the DS is super convenient. Like it, the screen's right in front of my face. I don't have to like lay out on the couch in front of my giant TV, which is super nice. 
Um, but you know, sometimes it's just nice to have the whole game system and game that you're playing right in your hands. So I was playing a bunch of older games on my DS and they had me captivated like all day, you know, like I, I was just like, I, I was replaying, um, some old battles in final fantasy tactics Advance two, which is like one of my favorite tactics games of all time. Um, I don't think I liked a two that much. Oh, I love A2. I love A1 and A2. They're like th- I really I really liked A1. I don't know A1 if I fantastic. I don't remember getting into A2 that much. I don't even know if I played it. Well, um A2 was an overly ambitious project that was actually never finished. They released it in an incomplete form. Um because the the creator of the Final Fantasy Tactics games is a, a perfectionist. Um and he's obsessed with like trying to pack as much stuff as he possibly can into a single game. And what happened was Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2 was um, originally planned to be released on the Game Boy Advance. Um, but the thing is, is that the project was so gigantic and overly ambitious that um, he just kept working on it and working on it nonstop until the Advance was irrelevant by the DS. And so basically Nintendo came to him and they're like, hey, we're going to have to like, we, the advance is no longer relevant and you're still working on this game, which is taking you incredibly long. We're going to port it over to DS, start implementing DS future features. And for anybody who's played Advance 2, you can clearly see that um, when you're playing it, that it feels more like an advanced game. And like a lot of the features that are DS relevant are like insignificant on the game. So you can tell that it was like a hard port where it was like forced, you know, like from the advanced onto the DS. And even with the extra amount of time that the creator of the game had, um, plus all of the changing of all the features to make sure it's, you know, properly utilized on the DS, the game is still not complete. Like there are like races. He had like four or five other races that were supposed to be put into the game that ended up being removed because he didn't have enough time. Um, the, they had the, the seek class and the, um, what are the flying bitches called? Um, I can't remember the name of the, the dragon girls, but, um, he had like all these races, like he had the two extra races and he was like, oh yeah, like they're all going to have like 10 classes. And, but he only managed to finish like four classes for each of the two new races, which was put on the completed game. And, like, he had, like, all these new weapons that he wanted to put in, extra abilities, extra quests, like, tons and tons of stuff. And it basically what ended up happening was because he was a perfectionist. Nintendo came to him and they're like, listen, we got to put our foot down. You can't work on this game forever. It's just not going to happen. And so he basically, they they were like, okay, like, find yourself in a place where you can stop and you don't need to implement all these other things that you're trying to add in. And like, we're going to release it because we can't work on this project forever. Um, and he actually also the the because I love his work. He did like all the Final Fantasy Tactics games, if I remember correctly. Um, I think he if I remember correctly, he had a hand in Bravely Default. Um, and he also was originally the head developer for Final Fantasy X. But then he was like. Because you can see, like, with his grid systems and stuff like that, like, that's what he's really into. Um, And you can see that in Final Fantasy X. And even Final Fantasy X was another project that he was doing where he didn't get to finish all the stuff that he wanted to do. And he also worked on Final Fantasy um, XII, um, which is, you know, like, he was trying to recreate tactics onto the PlayStation 2 um, in the way that he wanted, and it also didn't work out. So, like, he had to eventually leave and go do other games with other projects to kind of, like, you know, work on what he really wanted to do. And he, he's, like, a, he's a game perfectionist. It's, it's pretty wild. But that's why I love his stuff. I, I, I genuinely, genuinely enjoy all the stuff he does. I love all the complexity to it and stuff like that. But, sorry, I went into a whole spiel there because, in all honesty, the tactics games are, like, my favorite. <laughs> I, I really love them. They're great. Um, but yeah, so, um, I, I've been playing older games and they captivate me, man. You know, like they, they, they have this kind of just, 
I don't know. Like they feel great and like they captivate me and they hold me in place. And like, I'm like, okay, like today I want to like get all these quests done. And then tomorrow I want to like have time to like move on to this part of the game. And like, oh, and then on this day I want to like go and like get these rare items. And I, I don't know. They just, but like, I feel like a lot of the games that I play now for like steam and stuff like that, like they just don't captivate me the same way. Um, I mean, do you do you do you feel like that, Lettuce? Like I've been I've been talking a lot and I haven't shut up in a little bit. So why don't you tell me whether or not um, <laughs> you feel the same way about older games? Well, there are some games that I always like to double back to. But as a whole, like, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't think I. Uh, I. I. Uh, prefer like have like any kind of set rule about older games versus newer games well it's not like a rule it's just because like i'll play new games you know like I, i'll i'll try all sorts of new stuff like i like doing that but it's just like it's kind of like the idea of like there was a time period where like game companies were like oh dude we don't have to release a full game we'll just like finish most of the game and then release everything else as DLC and then have people constantly add on to it. And I feel like a lot of games that kind of precede that point where like all those businesses started realizing that like were just better designed games. Like, am I wrong for thinking that? Like, it feels like that, you know, I can see where you're getting where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of the limitations the, the inability to correct mistakes post hoc. Right. Uh, I remember I remember you developers. were talking about that when we were um sorry to yeah. interrupt. I was just gonna say I remember you were talking about that kind of stuff when you and me were talking about Blizzard a few episodes ago when I was trying to say, oh just get new developers and you were kind of telling me, well it doesn't quite work that way, you know? Right. Um the limitations kind of brought out best in the developers Mm -hmm. because you know they they did have to like make concrete choices right to get to get anything out and there there wasn't there wasn't the sense of oh well we'll do this and if it doesn't necessarily pan out we'll we'll patch it within a week right right who who cares if that NPC is flying across the map with his bodies you know, with his body parts like extending into the building? Like we'll fix it. Uh, we'll fix it later. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, and that that's like that's like I'm sorry. I I didn't mean to bring uh, Bethesda under fire here. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it just works. Yeah, it just works. It just works. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, God Howard. Thank you, God Howard. <laughs> shoot a shoot a giant in the chin with a with a arrow and he just cat and he just like rockets off into space. <laughs> yes. Okay, well since you were the one who who mentioned the the god of all games, uh the the lord of games of all time, the greatest game ever made. Um, Skyrim. Yeah. Um that's what I have been playing nonstop. The, what were these you, last couple of days. What were you playing it on? Were you playing it on your on your fridge? Or were you playing it on <laughs> were you playing it on your toaster? <laughs> well, now I have a completely all digital mug, high definition, 1080p. So uh with you know uh eight gigs of RAM. So I was actually playing uh Skyrim on my coffee mug, <laughs> which comes with the legendary special uh director's cut edition 2.0. Uh, they they released it full price for seventy dollars. <laughs> yeah, for 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 the mug console, the the coffee mug console. Yeah, I, I installed that. I installed that version on my flashlight. Because <laughs> because now I want to. I can I can fight dragons and get off at the same time. In fact, actually, yeah. <laughs> what, what's it what's it that you say all the time? Bruh. You furry. I'm a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. You furry, I'm a dragon. More like riding a dragon. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, I I've been playing um oh man. 
I've been I uh basically this does one hell of a blowjob. <laughs> That's hot. Unrelenting yeah. unrelenting force. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let me put this unrelenting force right in you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> um so yeah, I I I made I went back to Skyrim and the thing is is uh um I didn't just go back to Skyrim because it's been years since I've played Skyrim. I think the last time I played, I think I looked at my like game log and I think it said that the last time I played Skyrim was in 2017. So it's been about like four years since I've played it. And um, what I wanted to do was I was like, okay, like I not only want to play Skyrim, I want to have this completely brand new you know, unique experience that I've never had with Skyrim before. And the thing is, is that in the past, um, my older computer, which I back in 2017 is what I was playing Skyrim on, was not capable of having, you know, like SKSE and, um, you know, all of the graphical mods and all this stuff. Like I had some mods on my older games, you but I didn't have the things that fix Skyrim. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Basically, I I didn't have any of the like really um, basically all the quality of life and all of the like unofficial Uh patches and stuff like that. I didn't really have access to that because my computer was not powerful enough uh, to run that stuff. Um, So basically, I looked up some tutorials. I I've had Skyrim Special Edition, which is, by the way, like the 20th time I've purchased frickin Skyrim. Uh (laughs) And I didn't buy it at full price. I got it on a discount. So I didn't pay like the full 60 or $80 for the special edition Skyrim. Um, if I remember correctly, I, cause I've owned Skyrim for the PlayStation three. I've owned it for, uh, the computer two different times. So like I had, um, a, I had the, the original edition on my old computer. I had the legendary edition on my computer. I've had the legendary edition for the PlayStation three and the original for the PlayStation three. And I've also, and which all four of those that I just now named off, if I remember correctly, I paid almost like I paid full price for two of them for the original two. So that's like $120 at the time. And then I paid, I think, like 30 bucks for the Legendary Editions for both the PlayStation 3 and Steam. So that's like another 60. And then, um, oh, wait, did I? I didn't get it on Steam. I just had the original computer game for the computer. It wasn't on Steam. Right. Um, but I did pay like the, the full price for that. And then I bought uh, the special edition for Steam. And uh, which is the one that I've been playing on lately. And if I remember correctly, I got that for like $20 or less. They had like a really good sale on it at one point. Um, So I was like, oh, I can get like Skyrim Special Edition with all of like the updates and stuff like that. Like for less than 20 bucks. How could I say no? It's only just like the 20th time I bought it. Why would I say no? Uh, (laughs) So um, so I, I, I set up the Special Edition on my computer and I realized that my computer was ha- capable of handling all the cool stuff that I've never used before, such as like all the the graphical mods, uh, the quality of life mods, SKSE animation mods, and most importantly, that I have the most hands down important modification to Skyrim that I have never ever used before. But goddamn, am I am so glad that I have put it on my game because it has literally turned Skyrim into a whole brand new experience that I have never experienced before, but I am so glad that I am. Thomas Tank Engine Dragons? No, my friend. You're, you're thinking too small. Think think bigger. Think juicier. Think Mach- bouncier. Macho Man Randy Savage? Mom. I... No, but that sounds great. Um, <laughs> no, the dragons, I, the dragons, when they come out from the sky, they go, "Oh yeah!" yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that. That sounds great. Uh, I downloaded porn mods. So many amazing porn mods, and I'm not afraid to admit that because let me tell you, anything that brings Skyrim closer to like feeling realistic or at the very least making it feel like game of thrones (laughs) 
is is just it's wonderful. It's it's absolutely like, and I have like the the um oh man. So I have like not only a ton of sex mods on it now, but I also have like romance mods and stuff like that. So like, you never know what you're gonna walk into when you walk into a random house in town. It's great. It's it's great. Oh, and the most important part, I also have beauty mods, so you're not watching, like, the stereotypical uh, <laughs> NPCs. The the NPCs just, like, looking all scary and wrinkly and awkward. Um, no, they're beautiful people. Everybody's beautiful in my Skyrim. Everybody. But, um, yeah, it's, I feel like, I, I don't even feel like I'm even playing the original Skyrim anymore, dude. I really don't. It's like... I, I've added, like, town mods to make all the towns look nicer. I've got, like, uh, interesting player homes. I've got some, like, new quest logs in there. Like, completely brand new quests that take you to completely brand new areas. Um, I've even, even added just, like, just tons of amazing stuff to the game. And, dude, it is so amazing. I've never played Skyrim like this before in my life, and it literally feels like I'm playing a brand new, like, Elder Scrolls game. I mean, obviously, like, I can always remember that I'm in the land of Skyrim, but it's just, there's so much new stuff that it's just, like, I, I can't even imagine anymore playing the original Skyrim ever again. Like, it, the game is just spoiled me to no degree, and oh my god, am I addicted to it. Like, I, it took me, like... It took me two days to get all the mods that I wanted set up. And then I've probably spent about a day and a half actually playing the game after getting all the mods set up. And wowie zowie, does it, those two days of setting up nothing but mods feels worth it. <laughs> so, I, on the other hand, have been playing the bestestest Skyrid mod, Skyrid, Skyrim mod on my Switch. Really? What's that? I, didn't even know, I, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I didn't even know you could mod the, the Nintendo Switch Skyrim or anything like that. Yeah, it's called Breath of the Wild. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but I've also heard that, you know, Breath of the Wild suffers from stuff that like Skyrim kind of does where it's like, because one of yeah. the things that people say was the biggest problem with Skyrim, like the original version with no mods or anything like that, is that there's like, it's just vast emptiness, you know, a lot. Like, especially when you're out in the wildlands, like there's just a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why, which is why Breath of the, that's why Breath of the Wild is one of the most awesomest uh, mods for Skyrim, because it's like you're playing Skyrim, but every once in a while it tries to pretend like it's a Zelda game. <laughs> that's pretty good, actually. Um, I, I. <laughs> See, here's the thing, and, and I know that this is kind of blasphemy for a lot of people. Um, I have never been that into Zelda games. I've never been a very big Zelda fan. Um, it's just never clicked with me. Not enough waifu boobies for you. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, it, it, I don't know what it is that has disconnected me from from Zelda games. And I mean, because I played them, I've played Zelda games. Like, I mean, I have Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64, you know, like I'll go ahead and admit I've I've never beaten it. That's right. I said it. I own Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64, and I have never beaten that game ever. Not even once. Um, But I, and I played a few other uh, Zelda games. There's only one Zelda game I've ever actually beaten, and that was um, the Phantom Hourglass. And uh, that's the only one I ever beat. And I actually really enjoyed that game a lot. I, I enjoyed it so much that I actually completed it as the first Zelda game I've ever completed. But it's never been my thing, you know? Not hating on Zelda. I just, I don't know. It's just never... Something about it. I don't. It's just never clicked with me. I, I'm kind of like a... Well, I'm kind of like a Skyrim player. I like I like free roaming and stuff like that. But then again, I guess that's probably... Your argument, right, for for Breath of the Wild is that you get to run around and do whatever the hell you feel like. You can fly around on a kite sail thingamajig. To an extent, yes. 
terrorize all the all the people if there are any people i think there are people in breath of the wild aren't, aren't there I mean, I mean i've never played it have you what i mean <laughs> i mean like you played it right <laughs> yeah you know i played it <laughs> well i mean is that is that a game that you've been playing a lot lately or because you or were you just saying that as a as a haha no no actually i got my copy of breath of the wild back for my kid uh because I had beaten um, Skyward Sword mm-hmm. and he wanted to trade off. And I was like, oh, I can go back to playing. I can give another crack at playing uh, Skyward Sword. I mean, not Skyward Sword, but uh, Breath of the Wild. Right. Do you like Skyward Sword? I did not like the Wii U version. Okay. The Switch version almost fixes most of the issues. Right. Right. And Skyward Sword has one of the better stories in a Zelda game. Hmm. You just can't figure it. Be, you just get frustrated from the motion controls. Ah, okay. And rage, and rage quit before you get to it. I just, I feel like I hear a lot that Skyward Sword is considered to be like the one of the worst Zelda games. Like one of the worst like main franchise Zelda games. The, um, the version that came out on the Wii and Wii U. Um, the reliant, the sole reliance on motion controls. Yeah. When the motion controls didn't work nearly enough. Mm hmm. Like they were 80% reliable, but if you're playing a game that requires, you know, you know, if you swing your sword to, to attack something mm-hmm. and you have to swing it a certain way, you, you kind of want it to work more than, you know, three fifths of the time. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, you know, when when any game, like, let me tell you, as a person who's played like, you know, some some high quality games that had bad controls to them or just like weren't intended. Like, I remember playing Little Nightmares, and or I was playing Little Nightmares too, which was like, oh, this is designed for a controller, but like you can play it on a keyboard for your PC. And I played that, and God. Damn, that was miserable. It was freaking... It drove me insane, man, trying to, like, control the character with a keyboard. It was just, like... Because, like, they had the idea of, like, with an Xbox controller in Little Nightmares, you have, like, the two analog sticks, right? So, like, you would control one analog stick for your movement, and you would control the other analog stick for your sight and camera. But, like, on a keyboard, that shit don't exist, man! You ain't got, like, two analogs for movement and for camera? Like, what are you, crazy? No, you get, like, you get, like, your your arrow keys for your freaking, like, movement, and then, like, some weird... It wasn't even wazzed. I think it was... I can't even remember, like, what it was that you had to press just to, like, make it so that you could move the camera in Little Nightmares 2. It drove me insane, and I was like, I can't play this anymore. It didn't map... It didn't do what every game does in map look to mouse. Yeah, no, they didn't do that. I remember. Just, yeah, I remember distinctly they didn't do that. Um, they literally made it so that the camera sight was like a keyboard configuration. It wasn't a mouse configuration. It really super sucked. So like I rage quit that game. I'm sorry. By the way, Bo Falcon, if you're listening to this, I love you, buddy. I really appreciate you sending me little nightmares, too. It was a good time to be had while I had the chance, but god damn did that game drive me insane. <laughs> Drove me freaking insane. Oh, trying to like control it with a freaking keyboard. Ugh. All right. <laughs> but yeah, no, I get that. Like, I mean, if if it if a game has bad controls, it doesn't matter how polished it is like in how it looks. Like, you know, if it's a miserable mess of of a con- of a controller scheme, it's like what the hell are you going to do, man? You know? I mean, I've like I just mentioned with Little Nightmares too. I've rage quit games because they have like bad controller schemes. It sucks. Um, but yeah, I I just feel like that I've heard a lot that like Skyward Sword was was considered to be like not only just like control wise. I mean, I do hear awful things about the controls, but I also feel like I've heard that like um, it just you know wasn't polished enough or didn't tell a good story or like i just heard lots of different kinds of complaints about it in general so i don't know if the story if it never told a good story the complaints was the motion controls didn't function 
properly enough of the time mm-hmm. to let it to to allow you to the, ignore the times that it didn't work. Right, which is just miserable. Which is which is something you have to do with motion control games. Mm-hmm. Um, the there was a lot of stuff that was coded in the game. Right. The handholdy stuff, the tutorial stuff. Yeah, like I heard that. Like, what? What's that? What's that blue blue bitch's See. name? Yeah, I heard she's See. miserable. I heard she. I heard that she makes um the the fairy Navi. in Ocar- Yeah, Navi look like you know the most amazing intelligent character ever designed. Yeah, on the Wii, she's a bruh. <laughs> in- Why do I have to censor that word? I don't even know. I think I probably do. You oh. probably <laughs> yeah, you, you might you might want to. Who knows? <laughs> You're going to get a fat bruh for me, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in the HD remake, uh, they eliminated a lot of the uh, a lot of the fee pestering. Yeah. Just just removed. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the uh, like the first time you get like a purple rupee, you're like, mm-hmm. this rupee is worth this much money. Yeah. And then you would open up, and then every time you get a purple rupee, it's like this rupee's worth this much money. This <laughs> rupee's worth this much money, and it would and it would drag, and it would do the little the little you know animation where it turn and it would hold up the rupee, <laughs> and, and the slow just text, in case you didn't know, <laughs> and the slow text would just drag through. Um, Wouldn't it also like whenever you collected an item, it would like forcefully open your inventory and show you where it went? It would literally stop the entire game. Yeah. Open up the inventory, show you where it goes, and then gives you a small blurb about it. It's like, why? Why would you do that? Who is the who would do this? Why? On the, H- on the HD remake, they killed all of that. Okay, that's good. Th- then they might have actually made it into a game that's worth playing. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. If you if you have a switch. <laughs> Sorry, all you original OG Skyward Sword fans out there. <laughs> if if you if you own a switch. Um, and you like Legend of Zelda, I definitely recommend getting Skyward Sword HD. Okay. Because I've never seen anybody play it. I've only seen a playthrough of the original version, which is what all of my um, understandings of the game and its its uh, problems is, you know? If you, if you don't want to play with motion controls, you don't have to anymore. Right. Uh, that the right analog stick acts as your swing, as your sword swing. And that's kind of cool. Eh, because you also have to hold down the left button to to switch it from sword swing to to controlling um the free roam camera. Oh, so you have to like press a button and move the analog stick. That's not as good. I thought you well, was just like your analog stick is always going to be like your sword swing. Well, it, it, it defaults to your sword swing. You have to hold down the, the button to make it your camera. That sounds even worse. Your camera should always be separately controlled. <laughs> and that took a little bit. That took a, I'm not going to lie. That took a few minutes to get used to. Yeah, that um, sounds pretty difficult. <laughs> so the the trade-off for the motion, con- not using the motion controls, uh, if you have a Switch Lite, you don't have access to this because you don't have the removable Joy-Cons. Right. Um, is the movement on the analog stick? Right. There, uh, there's you know, just hold your sword out in one direction. You know, in thoughts that you're going to swipe into the opposite direction. What? Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, let's like let's say you want to hold your sword up, right, and then slash downwards. Okay. So you would like, flick it up to get so, a down so, motion. So you would hold. Uh, so you'd hold your your right stick up, and you'd hold your sword up. And actually, holding your sword up uh, is a game mechanic uh, that's actually quite important. Um, oh, is that for it, like the the weird purple blocks or something? Yeah, yeah. That's, like I said, I this is not experience from playing the game. This is experience from watching somebody. Yeah, play the the, game, the so. skyward the for the skyward strike. To to throw out the the energy blast to hit the goddess cubes. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and the, the you know, blocks. yeah. 
Uh, so let's say you want to sl- slash from left to right. Uh-huh. You would hold your, you would hold your sword out to the left. And if you are, and, and if there's a timing thing in, in, in to consider, you'd want to keep your sword to the left so that you can quickly swing to the right. Right. However, s- s- flicking your sword for your your right stick from left to right sometimes doesn't register as a flick. So you wouldn't actually swing. You would just change your sword from being held out to the left to being held out to the right. So even with analog controls, it's still kind of a mess, right? Yeah. Um, there's I mean, bus- no game there's- is perfect. I mean, but I feel like you, when it comes to game controls and mechanics, you got to get that shit down. You know what I mean? Well, it would have required them to rewrite a lot of the game. Yeah. <laughs> like, completely redesign, completely redesign, like, most of the enemies. Mm-hmm. So that they behave more like Wind Waker enemies than than Skyward Sword enemies. God, Wind Waker seems like one of the best Zelda games ever. Oh no, it, it straight up is the best Zelda game. Yeah. Um like which I like I said I mentioned playing Phantom Hourglass. Phantom Hourglass is the um the sequel to Wind Waker. And then after Phantom Hourglass was uh Spirit, Spirit Tracks, Tracks, which is like the third story in that um storyline. Yep. Um and uh, as the as the only Zelda game I've ever beaten was Phantom Hourglass, I can tell you that game was awesome. I loved it. Like, I have a lot of like really good memories of playing that when I was like a young teenager. Um, never played Wind Waker, but man, I love watching people play Wind Waker because that game is beautiful. It looks fun. It looks polished. Like, I feel like whenever I watch people play it, there's pretty much little to no complaints about the game at all. Like the mechanics, the controls, the, the art, the, the story, the characters, it just seems like I feel like that wind waker from what I've seen is probably in my opinion, one of the best Zelda games like that I know of as a person who doesn't play Zelda. (laughs) So, but yeah. Um, Yeah. it, It just, it sucks when like you have to kind of like, you know, play a game like because you were mentioning with Skyward Sword. It's just like, well, if they really wanted to absolutely polish and fix everything up, they would literally have to make a brand new game. And that that sucks. Right. Like, that that's just well, that's crazy. that is the. Uh, the the hole that Nintendo dug for themselves in the past two generations. Yeah. Well, I mean, but then again, also, like, taking that risk really paid off. I mean, like, the Wii is one of the most successful systems they've ever sold. I mean, the Wii U, I heard, was considered a flop. But the original yeah. Wii was, like, an outstanding global phenomenon of a success, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the Wii U did a good job of damaging all the, uh, of all the, the success that the Wii <laughs> built, though. Well, That's yeah. The- they kind of like they kind of moved on. I feel like they moved on from the Wii U pretty quickly, though. I feel like they recovered, you know. I mean, eh. you don't think so? Like maybe they're still financially recovering from that as a mistake. Well, no. Well, no. Uh, like whatever kind of war chest or coffers that they built um, during the Wii era, yeah. or during the Wii generation, the Wii U ate into a good uh, into a good bit of it. Yeah, I believe that. And but but this but the switch is doing the switch thing and it's and it's a good system. Yeah, I don't think that the switch is considered as successful as the Wii, but I feel like in time it will get there. You know what uh, I mean? Barring like uh, sales fall off next is year. Is it actually is it actually more successful than the Wii? And I just don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Barring a sale, barring a sales fall off next year, it will actually surpass the Wii. Wow, that's actually pretty impressive i'm i'm legitimately impressed well awesome i mean it seems like a great system it's just i haven't gotten there yet you know what i mean and i don't know if i want to get there like i'm not sure as a person who is uh still playing skyrim (laughs) i don't feel like i need too much in in technology upgrades for video games um (laughs) But here's here's the ultimate question that I have, though, is, um, you know, you said you have the ultimate Skyrim modification, which is Breath of the Wild. But let me tell you, does Breath of the Wild have like 
perfect realistic skin mods and like big bouncing jiggly boobies and and sex mods does does breath of the wild have that because come at me bro <laughs> I, uh, zelda's got quite the booty like 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 bare ass booty or just like you oh, know no, no, i no, think no, that girl bare. has junk in the trunk based on the size of her shorts <laughs> no no not bare ass booty but but she does but she she does little cute little scoot things and stuff. Little scoot things that does yeah. sound adorable. <laughs> like like, like Z- Zelda in the uh, in in the memories in in Breath of the Wild. She she does she's she's cute and adorable. Mm. Do they have like an adorable like furry fantasy like Midna in there somewhere? Uh, the Zora princess. Okay. Okay, some some fish ladies. I can get down yeah, on that. All if, right, if you, all right. If if you if you is a bit scaly, <laughs> you know me and my dragon ladies, bro. You know how I am about those those hot dragon bitches. <laughs> um, oh man. Uh, one thing. See, when I owned a Wii, I actually played through a little bit. Um, like I played through about half halfway through of um. Uh, what was it? Um, which Zelda was that? The Twilight Princess. And let me tell you, um, nothing, nothing gave me um confusing, uh, confusing feelings about what I was attracted to, uh, in my life more than Midna at that point. Um, <laughs> I was like, I, I got to know Midna in Twilight Princess, and I'm like, who am I? What am I into? What is this? Why do I feel funny downstairs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh <laughs> Twilight Twilight Princess was a uh, Nintendo way overcorrecting for the perceived childish nature of Wind Waker. Yeah. Oh yeah, no no no, that's definitely. A lot of people cuz like originally um cuz I I was watching a um a playthrough of Wind Waker quite some time ago. And uh, the guy who was playing it was actually saying how uh, when Wind Waker was first announced, it was one of the worst received announcements for Zelda at that time. Because, like, nobody thought it was going to be a good game because of, like, the cartoon Link and and the uh, the, the weird colorful light, like, you know, palette that they used and the model styles and textures and all that. And people were like, where's, where's my serious dark link? Like I need a, a Gothic, you know, Lolita Midna <laughs> who's a furry. <laughs> where, where is that in my, in my legend of Zelda playthrough? Where's my adorable, like furry princess? <laughs> where is my, where is my, my Gothic hardcore you know, angsty Link who turns into a wolf because he's also... See- We're all furries. They're all furries. Every character is a furry. <laughs> That's what... Twilight Princess, the furry fantasy. That's what they should... They should have called it the furry princess. That's what they should have called it. I, I I thought that Twilight Princess was all right while I played through it. I just didn't... As a person who just doesn't like Zelda games that much, um, like, I just couldn't get into it. Like, I just got tired of it, so... Did you play through Twilight Princess? Yes. Did you really like it, or how'd you feel about it? It was okay. Um, I had some gripes. Uh, I didn't like wolf combat at all. I've heard that before, too. Um, the The one playthrough that I really liked watching, uh, the guy also told me that um, Wolf Link was like his least favorite part of the game, so... It just seemed like is it like and and his exp- explanation for it too was that he's like I'm here to play Link. I'm not here to play a wolf. You know. Yeah. If I wanted if I wanted to play if I wanted to play Pupper's Link, I would have just fired up Oni. Oni is that the one about the the white wolf god or whatever? Yeah, the painting thing. Yeah, that game was so cool. That game was like a masterpiece when it was first released on the PlayStation Two. I'd never seen anything like that game before. That was so cool. Man, that takes me back. Wow. Wait a second. That game's name wasn't Oni. It was something else. Yeah, but I knew what you were talking about. Uh, wasn't it called like Okami? Was it Okami? 
I think it was OK AMI. Yeah, 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 it's Okami. Yeah, that game was so cool. But like, even though you said Oni, I knew exactly what you were talking about. Yeah. Like, that game was so cool. Yeah, if I wanted to play as Pupper, if I wanted to play Legend of, Legend of Zelda as a doggy, I would have just played Okami. God. Did they they made a sequel to it, right? They should make more Okami games. No, they, they did an HD remake. Oh, God, that needs to make a comeback. That game was so cool and beautiful at the time. And like the the whole painting style and like even the fighting style was great. Like just like those were some like unique and polished like game mechanics and stuff like that for that game at that time. Like that game was amazing. I would love to play like a new Okami game. That would be so fun. Man, like this is what I'm talking about. Like see, like my memories of playing older games just feel so much more um, I mean, it could just be like the classic rules of nostalgia goggles, but I also feel like that they just captivated me more and they were just, you know, there was more there, you know, that's kind of how I felt about it. I mean, other games do seem to have more to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, also a part of it is is also probably that, you know, like at, at those times when I was playing those games, you know, like when I ha- when 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 I was really into playing Skyrim, like that's because I was either a teenager or a young adult attempting college who had tons and tons of free time to just waste on Skyrim for like days and months at a time, you know, like right now, like, I mean, I'm replaying Skyrim, but I'm actually like struggling to like make sure that I have the time to be able to play it at all. Because let me tell you, like playing Skyrim, it's just like, you better be ready to sink hours into it. Like maybe even days, possibly even weeks, like, you know, to like get anything done. Um, Eh. You don't think so? I, I mean... I mean, I guess you could power level through it if you wanted to. Well, I I just never saw uh, uh, Skyrim as being one of those games that where if you don't want your session to be, you know, that long, then, you know... It's kind of hard to car- to feel like you've done you you could do things because, like, for as empty as vanilla Skyrim felt, uh huh, and even modded Skyrim still, you know, there's a lot of there is a lot of void, yes, in that map. Well, I mean, because you have to like make an effort to fill it in, and sometimes you just like like I said, I spent two days, two days modifying the game before I actually played it. <laughs> So yeah, there can be a lot of empty space basically even with mods. I get that. But yeah, the but you go dungeon crawling and you know, your typical dungeon takes you know a set amount of time to clear out depending on the dungeon, yeah. depending on what you're trying to do. And you know, you just go into a dungeon, uh loot it for what you think you need, get out, fast travel back to your base. And, you know, that was that's that's a good, clean session. It's not like Minecraft where, you know, in order to accomplish things, you know, you, you find yourself in a cascade of of like small goals that never end. Yeah, I get that. Like, definitely, I can definitely say that because um, like I, I was about to disagree with you, but then I realized that all of my disagreements were because of mods like, I was like, oh, well, I have a mod that makes, like, crafting tedious, where I have to go out and collect all the resources and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, but that's, like, a choice of my own play style. Like, if I were to play the game unmodded, like, vanilla, yeah, you don't actually really need to, like, really go way out of your way to, like, do a bunch of small tasks to get what you need done. So you're right. You know, I, I definitely get that. Well, even even vanilla, wa- wa- um or just, you know, graphics modded Skyrim. Uh, depending on the build or the kind of character you want to play, yeah, you still need to go out and farm ore. Uh, you need leather straps, stuff like you still need to collect that some a lot of that stuff. You're going to spend some tedious hours leveling up your smithing and enchanting, which is just standing in place and, and making things. And, and, hitting, <laughs> and hitting E like a re-re. Oh, God. The, one of the things that drives me insane about Skyrim is how, like, they have, like, a... And I'm going to look into seeing if I can find, like, a mod to, like, remove it. Bolt but craft. 
Well, when you're crafting something and then they bring up a thing like a like so like you click on the thing, right? And then you click on the next thing and you're like, okay, confirm, which is enter. And then they suddenly bring up a pop-up in the middle of the screen where your mouse is nowhere near. And like, and it says, are you sure you want to do this? And unless you got some freaking triple level, like, what is it? DPI on your mouse. It is a pain in the ass to scroll your mouse all the way from like the top corner of the freaking window, where, which is where you were primarily crafting, just to click on the button to confirm that you want to make the thing, which doesn't register with the enter key. So like, I can't press an enter key or a hot key to confirm the stupid message. I actually have to move the mouse into the goddamn window Wait to confirm second. the thing. It's like, why? Why don't, did you do this? <laughs> don't those have a directional, like a directional highlight where if you hit like a directional button, then hit space? No, no. And I totally know what you're talking about. No, you can't press like an arrow key or a WASD key to like trigger the the buttons to like oh. click on them. No, you have oh. to like use your mouse for the confirmation thing. It sucks. I thought Fallout 3 had that. They might have it, but Skyrim doesn't have it. <laughs> that, that's strange. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I'll probably have to see if I can find a mod because that just reminded me that I've had to deal with that a few times because I only just started getting into crafting and it's driving me insane. Listen, okay, my beautiful naked model needs different kinds of underwear and I don't want to be pressing the goddamn window key every single time. I want to craft a piece of goddamn lingerie because <laughs> there's a lot of lingerie. Don't question me about my playstyle choices in Skyrim, okay? It's immersive, okay? It's immersive. It's not... <laughs> I'll just be straight up with you guys. I'm just playing a porn game at this point. Thursday, <laughs> Thursday. I mean, yeah, we go from playing, we go from playing, you know, pornographic uh, Candy Crush to playing pornogra pornographic Minecraft. <laughs> Hey, you know, like, I, I don't know what it is. I, I I kind of remember when I realized that I actually like, like, it's funny because I, I can remember all the way back to being in middle school and high school and uh, sneaking on to new grounds back in the day and then telling them, teehee, of course I'm 18 or older. And then just all the porn games on new grounds. And then just being amazed by like, oh, I get to play a game and watch porn at the same time. This is the future, <laughs> like, you know, and uh, man, I love that. And then like I kind of like as I got older and more mature, um, I kind of like stepped away from that stuff. I was like, no, nah, I'm not really into porn games like that's not really my thing, blah, 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 blah. And like now here I am a grown ass adult. And like I I started like getting into slowly from one particular person uh, that is really one particular person that I've communicated with a few times who's really, really into porn games and started um, giving me like a couple of recommendations. And it was always like, oh, no, the gameplay, it's the gameplay. The gameplay is good. And then you play it and you're like, oh, my God, the gameplay is good. But there's boobies everywhere. <laughs> and, and you're just like, yes, this is what I wanted. And now I'm just kind of like wanting to like play games where it's just like, you know, I don't need to feel all uppity as an adult and, and avoid porn games. I can enjoy this. I can I can genuinely enjoy this. And now here I am playing Skyrim with like high definition, like 4K perfect skin like booby ladies and and by the way i'm gonna go ahead and say uh for all of my lady fans out there too um the men look great too i wasn't just gonna have like the the women look good no 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 i gotta i gotta have all the beautiful people in my game so i've got beautiful man mods i've got beautiful woman mods i've got like all that stuff and god damn skyrim is so much better when it has like beautiful naked freaking playable characters it's it's amazing i i don't think i can go i i don't think i can go back i i don't I, it's just like i don't think i could boot up vanilla skyrim and be like where are all the boobies like i don't think i could do it i don't i don't think it's possible for me anymore 
So there you go. There you go. I, I, I have returned to my roots as an original gamer all the way back in, uh, what was it, like 2006, 2009, and realized that truly, truly games need boobies. It's, it's just the way that it is and the way that it should be. <laughs> and here you are, you know, talking about how awesome, you know, it was to play a game with boobies that came out in 2006. And I'm like, it's 1982 and I'm playing games with boobies. <laughs> like, uh, what was it? The original um, uh, Leisure Suit Larry? Custer's Revenge on the Atari 2600. Oh my god, I think I know that one too. Like, not that I've played it, but I think I've seen it. I think I've seen that. I mean, um, everybody's everybody's seen it. See, my brain automatically goes to Leisure Suit Larry because that was like, Leisure Suit Larry was the game where it's like, you don't tell your parents about it. Like, I'm sick, I'm like 12 years old, what is this, you know? <laughs> like... <laughs> Magnum cum laude, Mr. Mr. Uh, Leisure Suit Larry, um, which is like one of the worst of the Leisure Suit Larry games, by the way. Magnum cum laude is terrible. Oh, um, yeah. That, that was the one for the PS2, if I remember correctly. Uh, that game's awful. Don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, the old ones for um, the old Sierra Leisure Suit Larry games, like those games are great. Like the old school ones, those are amazing. Like they're actually because, like, for anybody who's never played like a Sierra game, like the the Sierra games were so good. Like even if you ignore um, Leisure Suit Larry and all of its wholly amazing, you know, pornographic scenes, which is what that game's all about. Um, if you've ever played like King's Quest or um, what was the other one? Uh, was it Space Quest? Was it just called Space Quest? I think it was. So if you guys have I ever, so. yeah, King's Quest and Space Quest and, and the Sierra games are so good. They're like so polished for their time. They tell great stories. The gameplay is fun. The puzzles are interesting. Like the characters are fun. Like it's just, those are just great games, man. Great games. Going back to, like I said, old games, man. They just, not all of them. Like, I'm not going to say every old game is a masterpiece. Cause let me tell you, I've definitely seen stinkers for sure for old games, but man, there's just about when you look into the, like the ones that were like genuinely masterpieces, it's just like, man, those were such a great time for what they were and what they ended up being, you know? Oh, well, I, I think, I think we should get kind of close to wrapping this up. What do you say, buddy? Yeah. 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 We had a good chat. Good talk. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to, to mention about like old video games or, or, well, no, no, I think, I think you've covered it pretty well. Um, yeah. Uh, when you mentioned old games, I didn't think, you, you know, this is one of those things where you're, uh, where, where the age gap kind of hits us. You're talking yeah. old, you're talking old games and then you're like Skyrim. And I'm like, Skyrim's not that, oh my God, Skyrim's like, like yeah. 15 years old now. Skyrim is ancient, which is mind blowing. <laughs> Yeah, but for me, I, I thought you were going to be like talking about getting into like N64 games. Oh, I mean, I could. I could and, like because I played a lot of N64 games. Uh, I, I thought, you know, you were when we had discussed this, you were going to talk about an N60, like getting into like N64 and original PlayStation era games like that was the kick you got yourself into. Yeah, I know. I know you say that you've you own a functioning N64. Yep, I do. Okay. Um, I don't really play it as much because I don't have a TV that can run it. <laughs> because <laughs> the system is so outdated, I just can't plug it into anything. Um, <laughs> they buy, they sell um, uh, HDMI uh, upscalers for the N64. For, for the N64. Oh, I might have to look into that then. Well, I mean, when it comes to N64, like, I, I definitely, like, I mean, I have the original Super Smash Brothers. Um, GoldenEye was one of my favorites, which I still have. Um, Pokemon Stadium was my freaking Jimmy Jams. Um, nobody could beat me in that game. That's, like, the one game that nobody could beat me in was uh, the original Pokemon Stadium. Probably because you used hacked uh, Mons. Not at all. Uh, actually, the secret was Haunter all the time, every time. Surprisingly, don't go for Gengar. 
Gengar is like uh, the problem with Gengar was that he had the best stats, but he had the worst move pool. So the secret was to go Haunter. Like, always put Haunter right. in your team and you were good to go. Um, and that's from the original roster. That's not from, like, you know, adding in your own monsters or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I used to always have a team with Haunter on it, and that would pretty much clean everything up. And then the rest of the team was kind of just whatever I felt like at the time, as long as the type combinations were okay and didn't you know mess each other up and stuff like that so but yeah i used to be really good in stadium um i was the best nobody could beat me <laughs> sweet but, yeah um, i was pretty good at golden eye really i loved golden eye but i wasn't great at it but i loved playing it which is why i still have it it's kind of like how i feel about monopoly <laughs> i don't really win that often but goddamn, do i love playing it <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, Goldeneye is a good game, whereas Monopoly is just, you know, torture. Ouch, hurtful. How do you think Hasbro feels about that? Yeah, I don't give a shit about Hasbro. I was about to say. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say. Are you actually going to sit there and make me say Bruh. Hasbro? <laughs> yeah, they're a pretty they're they're a pretty not so good company. Um. <laughs> Uh, okay. By the way, Hasbro, if you're listening to this, feel free to sponsor me. And I will say nothing but good things about your game and your company. <laughs> I bought the D&D set, Hasbro. Please sponsor me. <laughs> you know that failure failure booster box? The, the failure uh, magic set that you release that you'll probably never, ever release ever again? I bought that. <laughs> uh okay yeah well i mean we can always talk more about like old like really old video games but the reason why i want to talk about skyrim is because like i got really really into it again and like i'll probably be into it for a while because like all the mods all the boobies all of the the you know new quests and uh so yeah i'm i'm here to play this for a while and i won't be playing it on the channel i know you guys are like ooh. Ooh, Mr. Habanero is is playing is doing a sexy playthrough of Skyrim and it's like, yeah, I am. And that's also the reason why none of you are going to be able to see it. <laughs> yeah, we like you like having a YouTube channel. Yes, I do. I do love having a YouTube channel. <laughs> well, I mean, cuz like a part of it too was that uh and this may sound kind of weird, but I kind of wanted to have a game to myself also. Um Cause like, I mean, I love playing games for my channel and doing that. And like, I, that's something that I, you know, love doing and sharing with people. But I also want to kind of have like a, a game that like, I can just kind of privately enjoy to just kind of like unravel, you know, like where it's just like, I don't have to worry about like the main thing is cause like, um, like it's not that I have to worry about the people that are watching it. It's, I have to worry about YouTube and like their platform and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, I can't do all the things that I want to do through a relaxing game playthrough of whatever I feel like on my YouTube channel. So like I was basically like, OK, well, I can, you know, play all these other games and, and do all this like I can play Minecraft on my channel. I can, you know, play this and that and this and that. But I don't really have a game where I can just kind of like lose myself into. I can be as outlandish and wild and crazy and and say whatever I want and do whatever I want and, and have naked nude bouncing boobies on the screen without having to worry about YouTube. Like, you know, being like, well, your channel's out of here. So that's kind of what I was trying to accomplish with the, the new Skyrim playthrough is just to kind of have like a little playground to do whatever I want in, you know? Yeah, um, no, that's understandable. Yeah. So, um, maybe someday, Maybe someday I'll do something with my play th with my current playthrough. Like if if there was something like maybe if there was something that I really disable wanted the to porn record. mods. No, not disable the porn mods. Just put it all on Patreon. <laughs> just put it all on Patreon, man. Uh, <laughs> you, like if you're if you're going to watch me play Skyrim, you're going to watch me play with all the porn mods. And goddamn, you better be a supporter of my shit. <laughs> uh <laughs> I mean, like I said, there's no promises, but I just the main thing was I wanted kind of like a a fun um, 
adult playground to play on on my own. That's that's what I was really seeking for when I started replaying Skyrim. So, but yeah, um, we should definitely wrap this up. We went on a little bit longer. Um, so, is there any any last few words that you want to make? Make or no? Uh, I mean. I've been reading up again on the uh, Steam Deck. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel bad. We were going to talk about that and we didn't. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, man. There wasn't, there wasn't a clean lead into it. Sorry, that's my bad, homie. <laughs> no, it's all right. You got you got to running and this was probably better. <laughs> well, we can talk about the Steam Deck next time, dude. I, I don't mind dedicating like an episode to it, and and oh, like, sure, because sure. it seems sure. like it's going to be interesting. Like I, I'm genuinely curious about it and thinking about well, if it can access my Steam library, which has a ton of great stuff on it, then maybe I'll want one. You know, maybe I will want one. Yeah, I'm actually seriously considering buying myself one for Christmas. Is it going to be out that soon? Wait, is it already out? It's not out yet, but I believe they're coming out this holiday season. Oh. Well, my my thing usually when it comes to new game systems, I actually have a rule about them, which is I will let them sit on like out in public for like sometimes a whole year before I buy one. Because I like to kind of like have the general public who just wants to jump in on it kind of like get their hands on it, do everything with it, and then be like, yeah, this is like the most amazing thing or Eh, it could be like improved if they like add like a couple like because you know they're going to be like after they do the steam deck there's going to be like the steam deck pro and the steam deck mini and the steam deck like version 3.69 you know like i don't know that's not that doesn't seem like steam's bag actually they're more likely to just release the device yeah and then abandon it (laughs) You think so? I mean, this is this is what Steam does, though. Don't um, they have a lot of support for like uh, the Oculus and stuff like that? Like, don't they work on that all the time, though? Mm, the Oculus is Facebook. Oh, which which is the one that uh, I'm sorry, guys. Which is the one that uh, that Steam does? I thought it was the Oculus, but I guess it's probably something else. Doesn't Steam uh, have their special designed like? vr hardware or something no no steam steam doesn't actually have a vr hardware what i thought they i thought they actually owned and supported like their own personal like vr headware i thought that was a thing they did god i i did not know i'm i'm so out of touch are you are you sure because isn't there like two different like um vr sets or something and they're competing for each other against each other or something like that and i I know one of them's the Oculus. I can't remember the other one though. I mean, there's the 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 two that I could that I could think of off the top of my head, and there's there's more VR headsets than that. But the the two big ones is Oculus, is is the Oculus, which is uh, Facebook owned, mm-hmm. and then the HTC Vive are, is the big one. Hmm. Okay. Who's who owns that? Do you know? Or if not, it's all good. Uh, HTC. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay, huh? I I thought for sure. I guess I'm wrong, oh, but they might actually have the index, but the index is. I think Steam might actually have the index. Okay, is that like the name of the headset, or is that like something else? Like their kit. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, because I was just looking, I was just like looking into it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I never realized that they kind of just, ab- I mean, I, here I am saying I'm surprised that they're abandoning something when, you know, obviously the half-life series, but, uh, <laughs> so I guess, I guess I kind of get that. I guess I can kind of understand you. You think they'll just kind of like not try to keep up with it and make new consoles for it or anything like that? Like no, new Steam decks? because, uh, because I mean, there was the steam machine. Steam machine. I vaguely recall that. Was that the shield? Wasn't that the shield? Isn't that what that was called? Oh, NVIDIA made the shield. Oh, okay. Um, but the steam machine, it was a small purpose, like a single single purpose, like steam box. It's a computer specifically designed for yeah. using steam, which is basically means it's a console. 
Yeah, it was like a little mini, P- like a little mini PC that 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 runs uh, Steam. Right. People got a hold of it, and they realized uh, the best use of it was to act as a uh, stream as an in-network stream machine from your actual gaming PC in the other room. That's that's pretty funny because I do know that that's like uh, a thing that Steam does because I've actually done it before streaming from one computer to another for a game. But um, yeah, that's actually pretty funny that they would do that. And I mean, that's one of the selling points of the deck, too, is that, hey, if you have, you know, you can stream games from your computer to the to the Steam machine. And that way you don't have to overload like the memory of the yeah. of the Steam deck. That's yeah. see, I'd be into that. There's some games you wouldn't be able to do that with, like um, um, I've there was a game that I played where I was streaming a game from one machine to the other, and the game was so heavy in like modification. It wasn't Skyrim. I think it might have been like a Fallout game or something, and it just did not want to work because it's like, dude, you're running this game with all these mods and you're streaming it to another system. Like you're crazy. Get out of here. Right. Um, <laughs> But I still that would be a really interesting thing, like other games that don't require tons of modifications that might be like a viable option and and might be really efficient on saving um, memory in the actual hardware, which is pretty cool. I like that. Right. I mean, the Steam Deck is a pretty decent full fat PC in and of itself. Yeah. But let's say you want to play a game that just just requires more memory. Right. Then, then what's in the the deck itself? And that's when you would do the streaming. <clears throat> that's that's one of those things where the streaming comes in. Yeah, that seems um, nice. That seems nice. <clears throat> but even but I mean, get this: the the system memory on the thing is sixteen gigs. So I don't know what game you're playing that doesn't that doesn't play straight on. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, some of the games get pretty big. Like it just kind of depends, you know. Uh. I mean, sixteen. You get sixteen gigs, even if that's shared between uh, your GPU and CPU. Yeah, that's more than most gaming PCs care. I mean, most gaming PCs uh, run at sixteen. Are we talking? They, wait, are we talking about hard drive space? Or are we talking about RAM? RAM. I thought we were talking about hard drive space. I was like, 16 gigs is like nothing, dude. Oh, but yeah, no, no, no. When I realized what you were saying, and then I was like, wait, he's got to be talking about RAM. Because, yeah, yeah, no, 16 gigs of RAM is crazy. Yeah, okay. 16, gigs, 16 gigs of RAM is... That's more is... than what you need, always. <laughs> uh... Well, I mean, because, like, so my computer, my, my gaming computer runs, I think it's like 12 gigs of RAM. You know, and, like, some of That's... the games I... That's hmm. an uneven. Isn't um, it? T- I think it's twelve gigs of RAM. I might be wrong. I'm I sorry. Mean, I can check. I can check right now because I'm probably wrong. If you have an eight GPU, then what you probably have is sixteen gigs uh, with uh, with four diverted back to your graphics memory. It's okay, but it's it's a lot. I have a lot. Okay, I have a decent amount. I thought twelve gigs of RAM is a normal thing, though, isn't that? Is that not like a normal? Uh, they they usually end up in increments of eight. Oh, are you sure? Because I I thought that computers can also have like four gigs of RAM, right? That's not so com- that's not so common anymore, and your computer is still re- fairly new. Yeah, no, I know that my computer has more than four gigs for sure. But um, right, I, I mean, yes, you can, was... you can buy you can buy four gig sticks, but usually usually it's increments of eight. Okay. Well, okay, then I I don't actually know how much gigs I I thought it was 12, but I thought I remember hearing it was 12, but maybe I'm 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 probably wrong. If you're able to tell me I don't think you're right, then you're probably right. So, well, I mean, it's I also don't think you have an age. If I remember your computer from when you were bragging about it, I also don't think you have an AGPU because I don't think your brother in law would have done that to you. Mm. Knowing knowing what you use it for. Right. Yeah, I just don't know where to look. Well, I'll I'll look into this later because we need to wrap this up because we've been going on too long and we're still recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, because we kind of got into like a whole whole thing there, but I'll look into it later and I'll report back. And if anybody's actually curious, I guess I'll update people on how powerful my computer is. I guess um, I would I would imagine, given the fact that your your brother in law knew that uh, you were wanting to use it for streaming, playing games and streaming on it at the same time, he probably put sixteen on it. 
You're probably right. You're probably right. Well, we'll talk, you know what? We will talk more about the Steam Deck on another episode because it sounds like there's a lot to go over. So, and we just barely touched on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll talk about it more in another one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, we've said our last words, which have twice, two different times now, uh, turned into long spiels, which, uh, um, we should probably move on from. So, uh, I think I'm just going to, do you want to plug anything or, or say anything special or anything like that? Like, do you want to, any support or other than go, go look at Lettuce's channel, even though he doesn't make videos. Try not to say your mom. You don't want to plug my mom. Trust me. You don't want to do that. <laughs> well, that's why. That's why I'm saying. Uh, that's why I'm trying not to say your mom. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Just go and go and plug something more productive and and less. You know, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, so, anyways, I'm gonna say all of my wonderful things, which is, guys. First of all, thank you guys for coming back to the podcast. I know it's been a little bit of time. Like, you know, Lettuce had his week off for being sick. I had my week off from being sick. So, thank you guys for understanding. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's just been fun doing these podcasts and having a good time and being silly. Uh, what the hell do I say at the end of my videos all the time? Uh, which is, uh, go ahead and smash the like button. I'm going to say that douchey classic YouTuber thing. Smash, smash that like button, like your left pins on it. And, uh, go ahead and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, hit that notification bell. It super helps me out. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me tell me what you think. Are, do you consider Skyrim to be an old video game? Because it kind of took lettuce by surprise. Let me know what you think about that. Like, is it an old video game? I feel like it's an old video. Game. And uh, tell me about other old video games that you really enjoyed and whether or not you preferred them against the newer wave of video games that we deal with nowadays. Um, Check in the description below for all my wonderful links, such as PayPal and Streamlabs. All donations are greatly appreciated, and they really help the channel out. And I want to give a wonderful shout-out to my amazing, amazing Patreon members because it's the wonderful donations that they send me on a regular basis that allows me to keep running the channel in the absolutely spectacular way that I do so at the moment. So those wonderful Patreon members that have my back always include the man who is sitting right here before me, Mr. Beautiful, Sexy, Amazing Lettuce Boy right here, right now, uh, <laughs> as well as Mr. Bo Falcon and uh, Fijuk Enterprises, James P., Miss Rebecca, as well as Mr. Scorpageist. Thank you, wonderful Patreon members, for always supporting me in the amazing ways you do. You guys are amazing, and I love you. Kisses. And uh, let's see. Uh, follow your dreams, clearly. I always have to say that and because I mean it. I'm not just saying it, just I actually mean it. And other than that, guys, thank you for being here. And we have been the Imaginary Boys. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.